So I was on Twitter and I noticed that people were talking about Kamala Harris and Charlemagne's interview. So I went ahead, watched a clip of it and saw the vice president of the United States like going off on Charlemagne because he asked a question and I got pissed off. So I went ahead, went to, to see the entire interview between him and Kamala Harris. And I was like, huh, ha, 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 you almost had me. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber and welcome to the world of politics where everything you see is not as it seems. You see, watching Kamala Harris like get revy irate and like wait, wag her finger and it, it seems like, wait, wait a minute, she's going off on Charlemagne and because he asked a question about who's the president, is it Joe Biden or Joe Manchin? Like she, she went off, she went off on him. And it reminded me of a couple of things. It reminded me of Joe Biden going off on him because he was pressing issues and Joe Biden was like, hey, if you don't know whether to vote for me or Trump, you ain't black. And what does Kamala do? She goes, hey, you're starting to sound like a Republican. And I'm like, wait a minute. Because he's asking questions, he's starting to sound like a Republican. And I said, and that doesn't even make any sense because the only people saying that Joe Manchin is actually running the country are Democrat. <laughs> we almost got you, bro. Y'all almost got me. But it was about more than just the fact that that line didn't make sense. Because admittedly, whenever somebody says something the Democrats don't like, it's not uncommon for them to use, oh, you're racist, oh, you're Republican, anything to deflect away from the fact that they're complete and utter frauds. But, but, after watching the whole interview, in fact, if you watch the whole interview, you'll realize a couple of things. Like, you'll realize that that's not the first time he brought up Joe Manchin. In fact, it was almost as if the entire point of that interview was for him to keep bringing up Joe Manchin. Huh. You see, Charlemagne asked about Joe Manchin maybe eight times. Now, I'm, I'm spitballing here because I didn't start counting until maybe <laughs> the fourth time. Because after the fourth time, I said, huh, how many times is he going to bring up Joe Manchin? Because he just kept on bringing up Joe Manchin. Every, like, it wasn't even every other question. Sometimes he kept asking the question right after he had just asked the question about Joe Manchin. Like, I'm, clearly, I started to realize that none of this was by chance. None of this was by happenstance. This was a scripted interview. Like, this was a performance. This was not an actual interview. It was a performance. But the question is, who was the performance for? That's the question. As I started breaking it down, I realized what we witnessed was a marvel of psyops, a marvel. It actually works on several levels. Like there were several objectives being achieved through this one interview. Interview. You see, at the first level, you've got the classic gaslighting of black people. It's what the Democrats do of making their issues seem like there are issues. They're not. But follow me with this one. Charlemagne keeps complaining about voting rights and saying, hey, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to let Joe, Joe Manchin keep blocking voting rights from getting passed? Voting rights legislation. So follow me. What will voting rights legislation do? It will allow black people to vote for Democrats so that Democrats can get into office and do what? Because let's see if just voting for Democrats is what's going to save black people. Right now, the Democrats are in control of the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the White House. What will passing voting rights legislation do for black people? Nothing. It will enable black people to vote for Democrats, thereby voting rights legislation doesn't help black people, it helps Democrats.
the key is making this seem like this is a black issue and that's why we need to be focused on criticizing Joe Manchin because he's in the way of our issues. But as I thought about it, I realized that the true objective of this interview went deeper than that. You see, I said, wait a minute. He asked her so many times and she kept fighting hard and saying, no, we need to focus on the, the Republicans and stop sniping with Democrats. We need to stand strong. We need to stick up for each other and realize that even if we may have a difference of opinion with Joe Manchin, he's fighting for his constituents and we have to respect that, but it's the Republicans that are standing in our way. So what was Kamala doing? Because remember, Kamala's been catching a whole lot of hell from the media. Quite frankly, as horrible as she is, it's clear that the media is on a tear for Kamala. Was this her way of, of rehabilitating her image, of standing up and, and making herself seem like, yes, she's fighting for the team. She's standing up front and center and protecting the entire Democratic caucus. She's a hero. That's what I thought it was, especially when she got just, when he asked that question and she said, hey, 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 hold on. You are not going to talk down to, to, on Joe Manchin and, and the president like that. She stood up and she made it known that, no, I'm, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to fight for them and I'm going to clear their names and I'm not going to let them be talked down on and, and disrespected. I'm going to stand up for them. And I was like, okay, that's, that's the play. The play is for her to stand and, and look like a hero. And then I realized, no, there's another layer. To understand the last layer, let's take a quick trip back to the debates. Do you remember during the debates, Kamala versus Biden? And Kamala, she let Joe have it. She let Joe have it. Like basically, she let him, she made him look like a misogynist and a racist. Before Iowa, she winds up dropping out. She doesn't have the support needed to keep going. The the party establishment just coalesces behind him, makes him the nominee, selects Biden as the nominee. He chooses a vice presidential candidate to run with him. And who is it? It's Kamala. And people are like, whoa, whoa. But Joe had beef. In fact, she goes on the Stephen Colbert show and he says, what happened? Like, you let him have it. How can we reconcile that with now you're supporting him and, and being his running mate? And she goes, it was a debate. It was a debate. I was a fake. And it's like, wow. So you were just performing. You were just putting on a show, making him look bad in order to amp yourself up, in order to promote yourself. But people were like, hey, but look at how, look at what that says about him. He was willing to let bygones be bygones and choose her as his running mate. You see, since choosing Kamala as his VP, I've noticed that all of the drama is getting pushed her way. All of the negative shade is being thrown on Kamala. Problems arise, boom. Suddenly Kamala's being pushed up as a sacrificial lamb. There's an old saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And Kamala is a shrewd individual. You see, I think she sees this. And so I was asking myself with this whole interview, this whole performance, was her ultimate objective to defend Joe Biden and make him look good? Or was it to undermine him? And I watched how Charlemagne asked the same question effectively about nine times. He and his phrasing kept changing until the last two times. So throughout the, all of the times he was asking, oh, who's going to be the superhero to save us from Joe Manchin? Will you be the superhero to save us from Joe Manchin? Why is Joe Manchin always stopping progress? Joe Manchin is, a, is, is standing in the way of progress. Like it was scripted. It was clearly scripted. But then at the very end, Simone Sanders interrupts to say last question. And then he asks like two or three more questions. She doesn't, she doesn't interfere yet. Then Simone Sanders interrupts again and he asks, okay, so who's the real president, Joe Biden or Joe Manchin? That's when Simone Sanders interrupts again. She interrupts again and actually step gets on camera. So she's partially blocking Kamala from the camera and she's like, hey, I, we gotta wrap, you know, th th we gotta end the interview. But they don't end the interview yet. Kamala wants to answer the question. You look at her, she's not like trying to run from the question. 
<laughs> she's heard the question because he, let me tell you how she how how we know she's heard the question. Simone says, I don't think she can hear you. Charlemagne says, she can hear me. Then he turns to, to somebody off camera and says, oh, they acting like she can't hear me. She goes, I can hear you. Kamala says, I can hear you. Kamala wants to answer that question. Then he turns back and asks the question again. This is the ninth time he's asked about Joe Manchin. This is the ninth time he's asked about Joe Manchin. And this is when he says, who's the real president of the United States? Is it Joe Manchin or is it Joe Biden? And then she has what she wants and she goes into her performance. It was a performance. And I, as I watch it over and over, I'm absolutely convinced of it. I'm like, this is, this is, this is a performance. And so while everybody's looking at, oh, how dare she talk to him like this? It's like, no, that was staged. And I have to give Kamala some credit. You know, she, she did, she held it down with her performance because you see everybody's looking at, they, they're thinking, she really angry? How dare she do that to him? How dare she speak to him that way? So she, she kind of, she kind of nailed her performance. Charlemagne's got to learn his lines better though. He's got to start, he's got to do some more rehearsals and get his lines down. He's got to be able to, he's got to be able to recite his lines without having to read them off the cue card. He's got to work on that. But you may be asking, wait, but she defended Joe Biden. How does that undermine Joe Biden? Because the question was asked. She didn't come with force until the question was asked in that specific form. So it wasn't enough to just mention Joe Manchin. The ultimate point was to make it seem like Joe Biden is weak and ineffectual. That was the purpose of that question. But that phrasing, that specific phrasing is what she was waiting for. I am absolutely convinced of it. I am absolutely convinced that she was specifically waiting for that specific phrasing because number one, she gets to look like a hero by defending Joe Biden. But at the same point, Joe Biden looks weak and ineffectual. Joe Biden looks weak and ineffectual because Joe Manchin is running him and Kamala looks strong by comparison because she had to come to his defense. I truly believe that was staged. And as always, don't forget to give me the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. If you disagree with me and you think, no, that interview was real, Kamala wouldn't do that. Give me a thumbs down and tell me in the comment section how many hours you've been following politics. I'll see you next time.